emerged from the shadows of greatness. He was a 49er fan like everybody else around here when he was growing up. To find his place in the sun. After having worked with Joe Montana and Steve Young, I could see those qualities in Jeff Garcia. As a child, he helped his family weather unthinkable tragedies. That's pretty much where they found him, in the water. Hell, I'm losing my family and I don't even know. If it wasn't for him, I bet my parents probably wouldn't have made it. With his dad behind him, he became a local legend. We beat him and they got his Don't tell me. Take your son. But was ignored by NFL scouts. You're not an NFL player. You're, you're not going to be able to play in the NFL. Until he got the chance of a lifetime. If I ever return to the NFL, then Jeff, you're going to join us, whether you like it or not. Only to face adversity. Jeff was called to duty before he was coached up, before he was ready to perform well. But Jeff Garcia found his strength and is now bringing his team back on top. I want to be the guy who helps lead this team to a Super Bowl championship. If we're going to win a Super Bowl, Jeff Garcia is going to be the quarterback to take us in. And that's the way we see it. This is Jeff Garcia, Beyond the Glory. October 4th, 1999. A Monday night football matchup between the Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers. Millions of viewers tuned in to watch as Niners quarterback Steve Young performed routine surgery on the Cardinals defense. We've got Steve Young there. He's got a lot of experience and is a pro bowler, no problem. But late in the second quarter, Steve Young took a hit that would change the course of the 49ers future is almost as if he's out cold. Steve Young gets hit by Aeneas Williams on a blitz. Steve goes down, suffers a concussion. I remember standing over him, looking at him, saying, man, you know where we go from here. The fortunes of football's most illustrious franchise were about to be put in the hands of a 29-year-old rookie named Jeff Garcia. A backup so raw, he had only seen action in one NFL game. Here comes the second string quarterback. Nobody's really ever heard of him. They came to me and they said, it's your turn, it's your time. He is right in the thick of it right now. When Jeff came into the huddle, we kind of felt like you can't miss a beat. We needed to win the game and that was the bottom line. The 49ers were simply hoping to win a football game that night. But for Jeff Garcia, this was a chance to make good on a dream he'd been chasing all his life. I'm living a dream. Just having the opportunity to play for a team that I grew up watching, follow in the footsteps, so to speak, of guys like Joe Montana, Steve Young, guys that I idolized. And this kid is going to get a chance to show what he can do. We knew how much pressure he was under at that moment to go in there and try and, you know, take this team where Steve had taken it. I wasn't going to have the wide-eyed look. I was going to play like I'd been there before. And when I stepped into that huddle, all eyes were on me. Jeff Garcia grew up in the garlic capital of the world, Gilroy, California, a farm community 70 miles south of San Francisco. There's a creek that runs through Gilroy. There's lakes on both sides of the city. We used to have like 60 cows on our property. It's made up of individuals who basically earn their wealth or earn their living through working in the fields. It's a town that has worked extremely hard to earn respect. Jeff's father, Bob Garcia, had grown up toiling dawn to dusk in the fields. We worked in the fields. We picked tomatoes, cucumbers, strawberries. If farming was a way of life for the Garcia family, then football was their guiding passion. It's a football family. It's been in the family far before I ever came into existence. Football led to romance. For Bob Garcia and Linda Elder, it was a natural match. She was a cheerleader, and Bobby played ball for me. And that's how they met. Jeff's maternal grandfather played halfback in the old American Football League and later coached Gilroy's high school team. Bob Garcia followed in his footsteps, taking over as head coach at nearby Gavilan Junior College. We were raised with football around us, so I can't imagine not being married to a football coach. Bob and Linda Garcia married in 1966. 
They planned to have a big family. In January of 1969, Linda gave birth to twin girls, four weeks prematurely. They died the next day. You just don't know how to deal with things. You just go from day to day. Nobody tells you how to live through the death of your child. When Jeff was born in February of 1970, it was extra special. It was an easy delivery, and he was just so beautiful. He was a joy. I mean, we were so happy. I mean, and, and then, especially being a redhead, we're going, God. The following year, Jeff's brother Jason was born. Two years later, the Garcias were blessed with a baby girl, Kimberly. They were very close. All three of them were. Kimberly was a little red-headed girl like Jeff is. Jeff's father worked hard balancing two jobs, farming and coaching. As young children, Jeff and Jason stood on the sidelines and watched their dad coach football. Sports became the Garcia's family bond. Both of them, were, at one time when they were younger, were my ball boys at Gavilan because they were always hanging around. Linda would go and drop them off at practice, and uh, they were always on the football field, and the guys were always playing with them and stuff. Jeff and Jason became inseparable. I remember just going to wrestling tournaments when we were kids, playing soccer, and just doing things together. We were always hand in hand, basically. We were always together. We were two sidekicks. You couldn't separate us. In the spring of 77, Linda Garcia was expecting another child. On Mother's Day, she miscarried. Hoping to pick up the family's spirits, Bob packed up their truck and headed east for a vacation with some friends at California's Mammoth Lakes. I can remember the day that, that, that you know, we went camping. Uh, the parents are good friends of ours. The boys that they went with are good friends of ours. Mammoth's creeks and rivers were flowing with water from the newly melted snow. Soon after the Garcias arrived at the campsite, Jeff, Jason, and some older friends set out to find a fishing spot. Jason and I were kind of struggling to keep up, crossing these little creeks and, and all that sort of stuff, but carrying our poles along. But as the boys hiked along the river, they suddenly realized that Jason was missing. We're kind of like looking around and, where's Jason? Anybody see, where's Jason at? They came back and said, you know, Jason had fallen into the river. We were yelling for him, we were searching for him. Nobody could find him anywhere. Park rangers were called to search the raging river. Hours later, that's pretty much where they found him, in the water, deep in the water. Jeff's six-year-old brother, Jason, was dead. I just didn't... I didn't want to live without my um, children, without Jason. You second guess yourself. I mean, I mean, even to this day, even though it happened 30 years ago, I look back and I say, I should have never done this, or I should have done this. The Garcia family struggled to go on in the wake of Jason's tragic death. Now those were, those are the saddest days of my life. All of a sudden it was like, Hell, I'm losing my family and I don't even know him. It would take the strength of an eight-year-old boy to pull them through. If it wasn't for him, I bet my parents probably wouldn't have made it together. 